Alright, what's up, y'all? Uh, welcome back to our college football podcast, Kinda. I guess. Kind of. We recorded an episode last week, so you'll probably hear us say a bunch of... Well, we said this last week, but you didn't see it because we had some technical difficulties and we couldn't get the video uploaded. Um, it took like four days. Yeah, it took like four days and they got like at like 59% just completely stalled. So, uh, you won't see... You won't you didn't hear us talk about that, but just trust us, we talked about it. Um... So I was wrong a lot. We can just re yeah, I feel like I was really right about a lot of things last week. But that's how it is with college football. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna you're gonna predict some weeks really well and then you're gonna predict some weeks really bad. And it could be a week in, week out basis type of thing. So we can go ahead and start talking about last week. So um we're just gonna talk about the big games really. We'll start with Penn State, Michigan. That was the first big game. I said last week that I thought Michigan was probably better, but I picked Penn State to win for the fun of it, and they didn't win. I, <laughs> I, didn't do I, I picked Michigan to win. Um, I thought Penn State was going to hang in the game better than they <laughs> did, and they just did it. The only all. reason Penn State scored points was luck, almost. Yeah. Um, well, what, they had a... Pick six, right? That was yeah, first pick touchdown. six and a drive where Sean Clipper had a 65-yard run or something. That is true. Yep, that's right. Um, yeah, they had no offense at all. Uh, or defense. And, yeah, or defense. I guess, uh, I don't know. I mean, Michigan ran all over them. Blake Corum, let me pull this down real quick. Blake Corum. Blake Corum didn't even have the most amount of rushing yards and still had a great day. Uh, Donovan Edwards, 16 for 173, two touchdowns. Blake Corm, 28 for 166, two touchdowns. J.J. McCarthy, 7 for 57. I mean, you're not going to win allowing that many rushing yards. No. And that's a, another thing we're talking about in the game after this. But, yeah, Michigan dominated that game. I, I found myself watching Auburn and Mississippi over <laughs> Penn State and Michigan at one point on, on Saturday at about 2 o'clock. Um, there was another game I was watching over... Ole Miss, or I was watching Ole Miss, but I mean I was not watching Michigan. Yeah, like I, point. I was flipping back and forth between Auburn and Ole Miss because Auburn seemed to like stay in the game until that yeah. delay happened, and then I was also watching a little bit of Texas and Iowa State. I wanted to watch Oklahoma and Kansas because I thought it was gonna be a good game, and it just, just didn't. Oklahoma just kind of blew them out, so we're not gonna talk about that game. They only ended up winning by ten, but they won by more. Yeah, they dominated. Talk about Ole Miss Auburn real quick. What I just said about the we're talking about rushing yards. Uh, first off, to highlight the lone star on Auburn right now, Tanks Big B twenty twenty carries, one seventy nine, two touchdowns. Uh, Robbie Ashford went eight for seventeen, one forty, and two picks. Um, and they still stayed in the game somehow. But what I really want to talk about here, Ole Miss sixty nine rushes as a team. 448 yards. Yeah, you're not stopping that. I mean... Those two running backs for Ole Miss are awesome. Yeah, Judkins had 25 for 139, two touchdowns. Zach Evans, 21, 136, and a touchdown. And Jackson Dart, 14 carries, 115 yards. That's got to be his career high. It definitely is. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's... And then, like I said, Texas, Iowa State. Iowa State, again, loses a close game. I mean, I feel bad for their fans. I mean... They're in every single game. And it's a good team. And they just can't find a way to win. I mean, what's that quarterback's name? Uh, Deckers, maybe? And Deckers had a good game. 25 for 36, 329, two touchdowns and a pick. Also had a rushing touchdown. Xavier Hutchinson, 10 receptions, 154. They could not stop. They could not stop Xavier Hutchinson. No. He was going crazy. But Texas pulls out the win. They kind of – did you see how that game ended? I did not the, because the fumble. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You're right. I did see it then because I was watching it and I was like, "Oh, I want to watch it." And they went to a commercial with about two minutes left, and I think that was when I flipped. I flipped back over to Ole Miss and Auburn, and then I kind of like forgot. Yeah. And to change it back, and I change it back, and the game's over. And I'm like, "Oh." Yeah, Iowa State. They they called it a fumble. It was a controversial call. They were driving to win the game. Yeah. But, you know, Texas is probably the better team. They were really sleepwalking after the Oklahoma win. Yeah. So, that um, happens. Illinois beats Minnesota. That was one. I think we – did we both pick Minnesota to win we, that game? I think we both said if Ibrahim plays. And he did. He had 15 carries for 127 yards on touchdown, but you have Tanner Morgan over here who is – 
Four for 12, 21 yards, and a pick. You know who did better than Ibrahim is the running back for Illinois. Yeah, 41, well, he had 41 carries for 180 yards. Yeah. Four, 41 carries? Yeah. Good. Tommy God. DeVito, 25 for 32, 252, and a touchdown. Pretty good stat line for him. Um, and then we'll jump. Uh, just, save, save the one for last. I just, yeah, we'll, I wanna, we're going to save Alabama Tennessee for last. But. Want to highlight that this real quick? Old Dominion crushes Coastal Carolina, who was undefeated, uh, and their running back had 18 carries for 256 yards and three touchdowns. Goodness. Um, just wanted to say that real quick. That won't be Coastal's last loss. Um, we'll talk about. I can talk about this real quick, just because you're a Georgia fan. Georgia beats Band about 55 to nothing. There's really no takeaways. From um, that. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. That is. I, just, I wanted to cover that because we have a segment at the end of this where we look at the biggest spread of the week, and at the time we recorded this last week, um, that was the biggest spread at the time. 38 and a half. 38 and a half. You said no, right? No, I said yes. Okay, you said I yes. Know. I said yes, and the crazy thing is, is I said, I feel like it's going to be 55 to 10. So I had Georgia score right, just didn't have Vandy score right. But we both we both were correct on that, so we're both, I will say one and no. On the uh, point five on the, on the uh, yeah on the uh, biggest spread of the week, um, Oklahoma State TCU. Also another thing we talked about last week, and we can just say again since it's something that um, you didn't see in the first episode that yeah. didn't get uploaded. <laughs> We're both low key Oklahoma State fans for no reason. Uh, I don't hate TCU. I mean, I wasn't upset yeah, to see yeah. TCU. Win. Don't don't. I'm not I'm not hating on TCU at all. Uh, but. Yeah, I just... I mean, I might be a closet TCU fan. I want TCU to stay undefeated. That's a fun story. But yeah, TCU's undefeated still. Oklahoma State, that's their first loss. Uh, double overtime. Uh, Oklahoma State should That's a big... They got a big game this week. Or the next game is a big one. Who? TCU. They play up Kansas State. Oh, that's, that is this week. Right, we'll talk about that later. Um, Syracuse-NC State was another ranked matchup, the third ranked matchup of the 3.30 time frame this past Saturday. Syracuse wins 24-9. No surprise there. Devin Leary's out for the year, and it's what I'm looking at with NC State is kind of like with Kansas. Your quarterback goes out, and their offense is just like not diminished because Kansas still scored 42 points yeah. this week, but their offense has really slowed down from losing – in NC State's case, Devin Leary, Kansas's case, uh, Darren Davis. Um, I honestly think even if Leary played, that Syracuse would have won that game. Sean Tucker, 14 carries, 98 yards on the touchdown. Garrett Schrader, 16 for 25, 210, two touchdowns, two picks. As stupid as it sounds, Syracuse might just be better than NC State. I mean, that game wasn't even close. Yeah. Um, Arkansas blows out BYU. Figured. Just a fun fact, since we're from North Carolina, Gardner-Webb, Takes it down to the wire with Liberty. Random. Yeah, random. Didn't expect that. Uh, Maryland beats Indiana. Um, didn't uh, Tua's brother get hurt? I don't know. I I didn't pay attention to that game I at think all. he did. He went I, 25 for 39, 270, and two touchdowns. Oh, he's a stud. Um, three hours ago, Coach Mike Loxley said Tuesday, took a while, a knee is considered questionable. So yeah. yeah. I'm going to assume that's a yes. Uh-oh. Okay, no way. I was going to say. ESPN app crashed on me. Um, another one, highlight real quick, James Madison that snuck in at 25 last week in the AP poll, loses to Georgia Southern. Uh, Georgia Southern's not a bad team, but it's not a team that a ranked team should lose to. The Sun Belt is a mess um, this year. Great game by both quarterbacks, to be honest. High-scoring game. Um, Todd Centillo. Centillo. Uh, James Madison quarterback, 28 for 48, but had 468 yards. He did throw three picks, though. And then, I don't know what this dude's name is. Hold on. Kyle, Kyle Van Trees, Georgia Southern quarterback, 38 for 64. When was the last time a Georgia Southern quarterback threw that many passes? 578 yards and four touchdowns. Insane. I mean, they didn't run the ball at all. No. Uh, Michigan State beats Tulane, or not Tulane, sorry, Michigan State beats Wisconsin. In they two, needed a win. In a two-overtime game. Uh, Washington beats Arizona. LSU beats Florida. 
Washington's quietly still in that Pac-12 mix. Yeah. Because that, that, the Pac-12 is interesting at the top. Um, Kentucky beats Mississippi State. That's an upset. That's 22 one versus I 16. Got wrong. Um, by 10. Chris Rodriguez, 30 carries, 196 yards, two touchdowns. They missed him. Uh, your hot take of the week last week was R- Will Rogers throws for 450 yards and four touchdowns. He went... 25 for 37, 203 yards, a touchdown on the pick. Yeah, he was bad. Mississippi State was bad. Stanford upsets Notre Dame. Yeah, it was an upset. A game that didn't really matter, but Stanford, who had one win, beats uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame is poverty this year. In Notre Sorry. Dame, yeah. Is, Notre that's Dame. their second loss at home. They've lost to Stanford and Marshall yeah. at, in South Bend this year. Purdue beats Nebraska. Um, Purdue's quietly 5-2. and two. A game that I, I just want to say this real quick because I found myself watching it weirdly at like 9, 10 o'clock on Saturday night. East Carolina beats Memphis in four overtimes. It was a pretty good game. I only watched the end. Um, Utah upsets Southern California. That game was fantastic. That was a game I got wrong. Um, I had I had Southern Cal winning. Uh, Caleb Williams didn't play too bad, but Cameron Rodman played better. Um, they also had... What was his name? Dalton Kincaid, maybe? He yes, Dalton, Dalton Kincaid, 16 receptions, 234 yards on the touchdown. That was the randomest big stat line of the day because Kincaid's good, but that's yeah. an absurd um, stat line. North Carolina improves to 6-1, and one, beats Duke 30, 38-35. We um, don't know how good North Carolina is, but they just yeah. keep on winning. Yeah, and that's, that's it for Saturday. Except, except for <laughs> Tennessee, Alabama. I mean, the game that everybody is talking about. It's it is Tuesday now, and I'm still seeing stuff about this game oh, yeah. all over social media. Um, I even saw last night. I was at home. We were both at home for fall break this past weekend. I was at home last night with my parents, and the news is on, and I'm sitting there, but kind of like you know, not really listening. And then I hear on CBS News. They're talking about the students taking the goalpost out and yeah. dumping it in the river. I mean, people are still talking about it. Um, 52-49. I, I you want to you talk about this? I, I, don't, I don't even know where to start talking about this, to be honest. Well, for the first time in the Nick Saban era, for the first time that anyone around our age can remember, Tennessee, Tennessee beats, beats Alabama. Alabama yeah. um, it was... Peak college football, yeah. I would say. It's very similar vibes to uh, LSU-Alabama game three years ago. Yeah, it was. Um, now, I'm not saying Tennessee is that LSU team, because that LSU team is probably the best college football team I've seen in my lifetime all around. Definitely the best offensive team. Yeah. Um, you keep going. But, I don't mean, I don't. Tennessee is a great team. They proved me wrong. Both of them are great teams. They are both great teams. That was my hot take of the week when we did our hot take at the very end. I said Tennessee beats Alabama. I was sure Bama was going to win. And there were definitely things that went, not referees, I'm just saying there were plays Tennessee made that Alabama didn't make. And the crowd really, really helped. We talked about that. There's games where, especially in, really in any sport, um, I, mean, especially I mean, college football. Is, yeah, especially in college football. I mean, you, we've I've seen it recently in MLB playoffs. I think, like, you know, the crowds in Philadelphia helped the Phillies beat the Braves. The, the crowds in Cleveland have helped them, you know, bolster their playoff wins that when they weren't expected to be in the playoffs. This isn't an MLB podcast. I'm sorry, going on a tangent. But, I mean, what was the, the example I gave you earlier was uh, – we go to App State, and that game against North Carolina week one, I, I told Jake, I said, if that game was played in North Carolina, we'd probably lose by 10, 15, 20 points. But I think the crowd helped us get back into that game. But, yeah, I mean, Tennessee's crowd was absolutely electric, one of the best crowds I can remember seeing in recent history, to be honest. The truth is about Alabama this year is they're really not the same. I'm not talking skill-wise. They're just – Discipline wise, they had seventeen penalties and they deserved every single one of them. Yeah. Like, they're just not a very disciplined team. They're not great in the secondary, which showed, and they're not great 
at different other spots on the field. Their offensive line's okay. Their receivers are okay. And when you're down that much in a game, they were down 28-10, to 10, you have to have some of these things to get back into the game. And, and they here's, just didn't have that. Here, here is something interesting that I haven't even thought to look at until right now. With that penalty, right, 17 from 130, Tennessee 6 from 39. But – Alabama outplayed them in all these team aspects. More first downs. more By two, but more total yards on offense. Less turnovers. And way more time. 15 more minutes time of possession. Well, the one play doesn't count as a turnover. The special teams play. Okay. Um, but in terms of the first down stat... Tennessee was just bomb- bombing long touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean the Hyatt, um, Hyatt, the receiver, he had six catches for 207 and five touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, Alabama, six for 13 on third down. Tennessee, five for 10. Alabama, one for one on fourth. Tennessee, over two. I mean, it was a very evenly matched game in a lot of aspects. Yeah. Um, I do think at the end of the day, it was the crowd. It was Bama making mistakes. And it was Tennessee, when they had the momentum, they took full advantage of it. Remember we talk about when Georgia and Missouri played, Missouri had all the momentum and didn't take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. When Tennessee had that momentum, they took advantage of it. They went up 28-10. to 10. Bama was able to get back into it yeah. and even take the lead, but Tennessee was able to kind of stick with them and not let Alabama coming back on them ruffle their feathers almost. Yeah. And then Alabama misses a game-winning field goal. And with 15 seconds left, Tennessee drives 50 yards and makes a game-winning field goal. Yeah. Barely. Um, yeah, like the momentum thing. I feel like I feel like the momentum thing is, has been big in college football this year. I mean, there's a bunch of games where, like, I've seen teams. I mean, I mean, we saw it first person, I mean, at JMU, right? Yep. I don't know if I said I might have said this, but we go to App, so we'll we'll probably you'll probably hear us talk about them more than we should, but it's okay. Um, I mean App JMU. I mean App is App is up twenty eight to three is dominating the game and just gets conservative on offense and ends up losing. I mean a Troy game. They're up on Troy, get conservative. You have to win off a hail mary. North Carolina up on North Carolina got conservative, gets down a lot and then couldn't come back. I mean we well, came back, but couldn't, I don't know, reach the top, you know what I mean? Or maybe a more mainstream example was Clemson this weekend that, against yeah, Florida I was State. Gonna, I was going to bring that one up too. Yeah, Clemson, Florida State. I mean, I'm a Clemson fan. We were dominating that game, and then we just let off the break. I mean, let off the gas, and it was a, it just wasn't – shouldn't have – final score shouldn't have been what it was. I will it. say no matter what the result of the game was, Bryce Young was the best player on that field. I still believe that. Hendon Hooker was amazing. But Bryce Young was making some plays that were superhuman to get them back in that game. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're going to move on, I guess. Or have you said anything? I'm good. Said everything you want to. Um, so next thing I want to talk about is AP poll this week, right? Okay. Um, so we saw a lot of shake up because of teams losing up in the top 15 area. George, Ohio State, stay one and two. Tennessee, Tennessee shoots up to three. Michigan, Michigan shoots up to four. Clemson drops to five. Alabama drops to six. Ole Miss up to seven. TCU up to eight. UCLA up to nine. Oregon up to ten. All of these are not. The only one that out of those that what that were one spot jumps or falls was Michigan Clemson swapping four and five. Um, Oklahoma State falls. USC falls. Syracuse shoots up to 14. Utah shoots up to 15. Penn State drops to 16. Illinois is up to 18. Um, North Carolina hops in the top 25. Finally enters the poll. At uh, 22. NC State, Mississippi State, I'll talk about this in a minute, probably should have dropped out maybe, but... There's nobody else to take their spots. Didn't. And then Tulane. Finally, Sneaks yeah. in at 25. Yeah. Um, their one loss was to... Um, who was their one? I think it was to Oklahoma. Wasn't it? It might have been. I can look here in a minute. Uh, if you want to talk about your top 25 real quick and your highs and stuff, or we'll, we'll stay on highs and stuff for a minute. But So my top 25, I have Georgia 1, Ohio State 2. I actually have Michigan 
at three over Tennessee just because they beat a top ten team by what twenty thirty points. Yeah. So I think that they deserve the three spot. I don't deserve that they or don't believe. Wow, Tulane wa- lost week four 27-24 to Southern Miss. Ooh, that's yeah, tough. bad loss. Bad it loss. is. They did beat Kansas State though. That's right. They beat Houston, who isn't terrible. And then they beat East Carolina and South Florida. That's not bad. All right, you can keep going. So I have Michigan, and then I have Tennessee. I just don't believe that Tennessee deserves to jump Michigan just yet. I think Michigan's resume is a little better. Um, I've got Clemson at five. I actually have TCU at six. Just because they're undefeated, their resume is better than Ole Miss's. Um, I've got Ole Miss seven, Alabama eight, and then undefeated in the Pac-12. I've got UCLA at nine and one loss Oregon at ten. So I'm going Georgia, Ohio State, but then this is where we, we switch up a little. I'm going I have Tennessee three. I clips I kept Clemson at four and it's not really a biased thing, it's more just like I think if Clemson and Michigan played tomorrow, Clemson wins. That's just I can get behind all it is to it. Michigan at five, Alabama at six, TCU seven, Ole Miss eight. I really just I really just don't know how good Ole Miss actually is. I agree. It's just I want to see them play somebody, and I think go. I think they go to LSU this week, right? Yeah, their next five games is LS in no order: LSU, Bama, Mississippi State, Arkansas, and who else have they not played? It might just be them and one more. And A and M. Okay, that's I mean, their next five. I mean, that's five games that I'm not gonna say they're gonna lose, but I think potential to lose. They should. I mean, they should beat A and M and Arkansas, but. Yeah. They could lose those games. And they should beat LSU. They should beat LSU. Yeah. Um, Ole Miss at 8, UCLA also at 9. And then I, I kept Southern California in the top 10. I kept them in the top 10. I just think that Utah is a good team, and I think that if Southern California played these other teams below them, they're beating the majority of them. Um, differences in the – compared to my poll and the AP poll – um, I actually didn't drop Mississippi State out. Actually, I lied. I, didn't either. I thought I did. They're at twenty two. I did drop NC State out. I oh, I I, I did put UNC in there at twenty three. I think they're twenty two in the real poll. I've got UNC twenty. But my twenty four, twenty five are two teams that are not ranked. I threw Purdue in at twenty four, and I threw LSU back in there at twenty five. I know they are at twenty five. Not this past week, but the week before when they got beat by thirty by Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, they beat Florida, who isn't a terrible team this year. They're not as good as they usually are, but they beat a Florida team that's pretty decent. And I think if they keep it close with uh, – well, I'm going to put it like this. They beat Ole Miss, they're definitely ranked next week. But if they keep it close, I feel like if some craziness happens at the back end of the poll, then they yeah. could even possibly still sneak in there. They're receiving votes. And then moving on to Heisman, I want to hear what you have to say first because – Last week I had I had Hendon Hooker at uh at three yeah I had him at three and uh you you were like I just don't see it in him and then now you're I said if they want I throw him in there yeah. I'll put Hooker at three this week okay I've still got C J Stroud one yeah and I don't remember who I had at two it might have been Bryce okay um, but I think Bryce has to be below Hooker I'll put Bryce Young at four. I'll keep Blake Corum at five. And I don't remember who I had at two. Was it Caleb Williams? It might have been. I think I'll put leave Caleb. Well, they lost, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. See, that's where I'm at. Yeah. So, I, I, okay. We'll go Stroud. We'll go Hooker. We'll go Bryce. We'll go Blake Corum four. And I think I'm going to throw Stetson Bennett in there at five for fun. I was hoping you were going to say Caleb Williams because if you would have, we'd have the same exact top five. That's wild. Uh, I kept C.J. Stroud at one. It's just, if you look at him and Hooker's stats, he's got more touchdowns. He has two more picks, but he's got, like, I think not. I think he's got 24 and three. Hooker's got 15 and one. Yeah. Um, He's got more yards, I think. And it's just consistency. If you look at C.J. Stroud's stat line every week, it's like, okay, I'm going 19 for 23 for, for 303 touchdowns. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, it's, it's every week. Um. Hendon Hooker is at two, Bryce Young is at three, Blake Corm is at four, and I had Caleb Williams at five. I feel like I couldn't drop him out because he didn't have a bad game. No, he didn't. But they lost. Um, and then I guess we can do this like we did last week, sleeper pick. 
Um, I like Spencer Sanders, but since they lost, I'm going to have to take him out. What about Max Duggan? Yeah, I thought about him. Um, who else is there? Who was my sleeper pick last week? It was somebody, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, they didn't play. Yeah, they didn't play this week, so I'm going to throw somebody else in there. I'll throw somebody else in. I did drop Jameer Gibbs out of my top five. He was in it last week and replaced him with Blake Quorum. I'll say that real quick. Um, man. Uh, I've got one. Sean Tucker, Syracuse. Yeah, he didn't have a great game this weekend. But I want to see what he does against Clemson this week. Um, he did have 255 yards against Wagner. It's a Heisman moment type game against Clemson if they were to win. Which they're not. I, I want to do what we did last week where it's not a quarterback. I don't want to pick a quarterback. I'll do it like this. I'll do it like this. Max Duggan as the quarterback. And as the non-quarterback, like we said last week, there's no like defensive guy this year that you can throw in there. If I'll do a quarterback with, I'll keep Sean Tucker, and if we're doing another quarterback, I'll do DTR. For DT, oh, yeah, DTR is definitely up there. Um, he's top ten. Oh, man, this is tough. Deuce Vaughn's one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, keeping it with TCU on both sleeper picks, Quint, Quentin Johnson, I think is his name. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. He's, he's having a good year. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and then, I mean, I guess we'll go into talking about games this week. Um, so this is our section where I, I another thing I was said last week, and y'all didn't see it, so it's, it's going to be confusing. So I have two sections here, right? We go random but can mean something games, and then, like, the big games. And this week it was hard because there was games that in a, like, in a game, like, sorry, Games that were in a, like, last week's setting would have been in the random but can mean some games, but this week are in the huge games because there's yeah. nothing really, there's, there's nothing, like, crazy, crazy going on this week. Um, so random but can mean some games, no weeknight games. Oh, I want to talk about App real quick. We always, I always said that we'll talk about App every week that they have a game, um, and they didn't last week since we go here. We play tomorrow night, Wednesday night, against Georgia State on ESPN it's either ESPN or ESPN two. Might be two. It's gonna be freezing here. Yeah, gonna be absolutely. Um, like it's already freezing here. It's like thirty degrees and the wind blowing, which is terrible. Um, another weeknight game. This is our third year in a row. Well, excluding the COVID year. Yep. Our freshman year we had Georgia Southern. Last year we had Marshall and Coastal. And then this year we have Georgia State and then Coastal, but it's at Coastal. We always seem to win. I don't want to say that, but. We do always seem to win these. We always seem to win these, these or at least keep it close. Georgia State isn't that good this year. I'm going to take App. Um, What's the spread? I don't know. I think like not, I, I think I looked at it the other day. It was like nine and a half. It opened at nine and a half, I think. Plus. Um, ten now. It's ten App. Give me App to win. Give me Georgia State in the points. Okay. That's reasonable. I think we um, won by nine. Okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to take App. I think we do cover. I think we win by 17. Okay, that's fair. Um, 34-17 is something that I like. Their defense isn't great, but their offense isn't great either. Uh, their quarterback, so they're just not very good. Yeah, their quarter, they're 2-4 and four this year. Um, they beat. They lost to UNC Charlotte. They were 0-4. They've won two games in a row, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They lost to South Carolina, reasonable, in North North Carolina. Only lost to North Carolina by a touchdown. So, uh, mm-hmm. lost to Charlotte by one point. Beat, got beat by Coastal by 17. Beat Army by 17. And then lost, or sorry, beat Georgia Southern last, or two weeks ago. Cause, so, they're coming off a of bye week also. Which I guess makes sense since you're playing on Wednesday. You probably don't want to play on a Saturday. Uh, beat Georgia Southern by eight. Yeah, I'll take I'll take App and cover. I'll take App and okay. cover the ten. Um, so that's the only weeknight game I really want to talk about. Everything else is kind of crappy. Thursday, there's Virginia, Georgia Tech, Troy, South Alabama, Tulsa Temple, and UAB Western Kentucky. Give me Virginia over Georgia Tech. Other than that, I don't care about any of the rest of them. So then we go to Saturday, and like I said, I'm going to go with these random but can mean something games first. So if you hear me say this is a 12 o'clock game, and then I skip to a 3. For example, 
We're going to talk about Iowa, Ohio State first, and then Kansas, Baylor, and then go to Memphis, Tulane, which is a 3.30 game. Don't think I skipped Syracuse, Georgia, because we will talk about, or sorry, not Georgia, Syracuse, Clemson. We will talk about that. But first, I want these random games. Iowa, Ohio State. The only reason I put this on here, right, is because how good Iowa's defense is versus how good Ohio State's offense. I want to see what Ohio State does against this Iowa defense. Um. Well, early on, you might see Iowa's defense get some success. And then when they realize that their offense isn't going to score any points, they start yeah. letting up points. Yeah. Um, I could see Ohio State only scoring 38. Yeah, only scoring 38. Yeah. Um, definitely taking Ohio State. I'm going to save the spread for right now. I'm going to save the spread, giving a little giving a little insight to something later. I'm going to save the spread. I'll take Ohio State. I'm assuming you're going to take Ohio State. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Oh, my. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> it is the biggest sp- I'm pretty sure. Well, as I looked up the other day, Ohio State is a 29-point <laughs> favorite on That's on the biggest Iowa. spread? Yeah. As of right now, I'm pretty sure. That I wrote down a couple that were all, like, in the mid-20s, but it was 28 the other day. Now it's 29. Um... Oh. Excluding Tennessee and UT Martin because that doesn't even have a spread because they're going to beat them so bad. Um, okay. Then the other 12 o'clock game I want to talk about first and these random games is Kansas-Baylor. Baylor is looking to bounce back after a loss. A couple losses, I think, actually. Their quarterback got hurt the other night. And I think that's the, did. I think that's the only reason why they lost that game. To be honest, because they were rolling okay. against West Virginia. It says it's a head injury. I don't know if that's a concussion or what, but they are favored by eight points. I think Kansas without Jalen Daniels is dead. It's in Waco also. I think that Baylor wins. What's the spread? Eight. I I'm gonna take. Bre- give me Baylor. We both picked Baylor last week too. I don't want to. I don't want to take Baylor. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take Baylor. Go I think, Bears. I think Kansas covers the spread though. Okay. I think it's either a seven or a three point game. Okay. I think it's a close game. Um, Kansas just needs one more man. Get him to bowl eligibility. Moving to three thirty. I said this earlier. Is it Tulane Memphis? That's how you know it's a bad league. We're talking about Tulane Memphis. Well, Tulane's right. Yeah, Tulane is right. At twenty five, six and one. Like we said, their one loss is to Southern Miss, but they beat Kansas State and Houston. Memphis is 4-3, and three, coming off of, again, something we talked about earlier, a four-overtime loss to East Carolina and a loss to Houston. They've lost two games in a row by a combined three points. Um, just Memphis is never bad, right? No, never. But they're never, like, amazing. Where's the game? It... It's at Tulane in New Orleans. And the spread is Tulane minus seven. Give me the wave. But it's another heartbreaker in Memphis covers. (laughs) For fun, I'm going to take Memphis. Why not? I'm going to take Memphis. And obviously that means they would cover the spread if they win. Um, I'll take Memphis for fun. Um, I don't know. I just feel like we see another James Madison last week situation. Team gets into a, the top 25 that's not used to it and loses to a team that they shouldn't lose to. Um, or maybe they should lose to them. Yeah, you're right. And another 330 random game is Purdue-Wisconsin. Wisconsin is in shambles right now. Absolute shambles. Um, it is in Wisconsin, which I think helps them because... When they lost to Michigan State, it was at Michigan State. The only game they've lost at home this year, never mind, they've lost two games at home. They lost to Washington State and Illinois at home. But all their other two losses are at Ohio State and at Michigan State. So I guess I don't know how to gauge that really. Wisconsin is actually favored minus two. I'll take I I'll, I'll take Purdue. I'm taking Purdue. Purdue's I'll, a pretty good team. I'll take Purdue and Aiden O'Connell who like Sean Clifford, is somehow still in college. Um, Purdue and Illinois is probably going to come down to them. And then another Big Ten game. This is at 7 o'clock on Saturday. 
is Minnesota Penn State. Just, I don't know. It Both off of a loss. Minnesota's lost two in a row now. Penn State's coming off that big loss to Michigan. Penn State's favored minus five. Oh, it's 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 in it's in it's in uh, Penn State though. I think Penn State bounces back. Look, Penn State had a horrible showing against Michigan. Yeah. But everything is still out in front of Penn State. They could still win that division if they somehow were to beat Ohio State, and they could still have a great year. Um, I'll take Penn State to win, bounce back. I I I just can't pick against Penn State in the night game. No. That's not again. That's a team that I think they're better. I don't think they do. I think they cover the five points also. Yeah, I, I think know. they win by like ten. Um, and then that's all the random but can mean something games. So now we go to like the bigger games. I would say we start. We go back to that noon time frame. The only big game in the noon time frame. Syracuse in Death Valley versus Clemson. Both undefeated. Both ranked five versus fourteen. I'm a Clemson fan. You can talk about it. I don't want to sound biased. Uh, what's the spread? Clemson minus 13 and a half. Really? Well, Clemson doesn't lose at home. They haven't lost at home since 2016. I think Clemson is rolling right now. DJ's got some confidence. Uh, I mean, Syracuse has looked great. I just don't think it's a great matchup when your best player is your running back, Sean Tucker, against that Clemson defense. I think it might start out close. I think there might be a lot of energy from Syracuse to start with, but I think in the end, Clemson wins. I don't think they cover. Um, I'm going to go the same. I think Clemson wins but doesn't cover. Um, yeah, I think it's going to – I think it might be kind of hard for Sean Tucker to get get going. Um, I mean, K.J. Henry is having a breakout season finally. Um, I mean, he's playing so great. It's it's different. He, he goes off the field sometimes, and you can see the difference yeah. between him being on the field and him not being on the field. Now, he's not the best player on the field, I don't think, when we're on defense, but he's he's having such an impact that it's noticeable. Uh, Brian Bercy, great player. Tyler Davis, great player. Miles Murphy, probably a top 10 pick. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you see – all three of the guys I just named go in the first round. The They'll first probably round. go first round. Um, I think Sean Tucker might have a... I don't know how good Syracuse's offensive line is in, in both that. aspects, passing and run blocking. Um, I think Sean Tucker gets it going a little bit, but I don't think he gets it going enough. And Garrett Schrader, I just don't know if he is the type of quarterback that can really beat Clemson. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I just... I don't feel like this is a game that's, that Clemson's going to lose. You can tell the games that have a potential to lose, and I just don't really feel like this is one of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, after this, Clemson goes Notre Dame, Louisville, Miami, and South Carolina, who none of them are over five. Three of them are 500. One of them is over 500 by one game. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to take Clemson. Syracuse covers at 13 and a half though. Then we move to 330, which again kind of has like three good games. Not as good as last week's games, but three good games. And again, it's a no. Last week it was last week it was SEC Big 12 ACC. This right. week it is an SEC Big 12 Pac 12. Okay. Uh matchups. We got Ole Miss and LSU. In Death Valley. No way, LSU minus one and a half right now. <sighs> That's crazy. You know what's crazier? You're gonna I'm going to take LSU to win. I kind of wanted to do it, but I don't think I am. Now that you did it, I don't think I'm going to do it. Um, I'll take Ole Miss to cover, obviously. Again, it's just like I don't know how good Ole Miss actually is. I kind of want to take LSU, but... And then being in Death Valley, oh man, that's what's getting me. Is I think LSU. I think you see a similar LSU crowd to not similar but kind of close to that Tennessee crowd on Saturday, where they're just absolutely rowdy, really into it, and helps LSU out a lot. Um, LSU is not a bad team. They're not. They're not. Um, who's their other loss to? Florida and who? I mean, sorry, Tennessee and who? Florida State, Week One. 
Fluky. Yeah, it was fluky. One point. Yeah. Um, beat Mississippi State. Um, beat Florida might be better. Uh, yeah. Especially an Ole Miss team that's almost due for a loss and hadn't been tested yeah. yet. Yeah. Versus LSU. This is something I want to look at real quick. What is LSU's per game rushing? That's a good question. I bet last week they rushed the ball well. LSU is allowing 145.6 rushing yards a game. 192 passing. So it's kind of even. I'm going to take Ole Miss. I'm going to take Ole Miss. Since you took LSU, I'll take Ole Miss. I just think LSU is going to score. I think they will too. I think it's a close game, though. I think it is a close game. Shootout. Um, and then we'll move to the second biggest of the three is Texas going to Oklahoma State. This is two of four ranked matchups, I think. Two of four ranked matchups on the day. Texas coming off of a two big wins. Two big wins. Sitting at five and two. Oklahoma State coming off of a unfortunate loss at five and one. Texas is minus six. It's, I'm going to be honest, and I hate saying it. It's so hard for me to pick against Quinn Ewers when he's playing. Texas is just so talented, yeah. and I was high on them before the year. I'm high on Oklahoma State, too. Where's the game again? It is at Oklahoma State, though. That, that's Oklahoma where Oklahoma State's coming off a loss. Okay, so here's the two things that get me. It's at Oklahoma State, so I kind of want to take them, but they're – their passing defense is not good. Mm-hmm. They are allowing 300 passing yards a game. And Texas has receivers and a quarterback. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to take Texas. Dang. I'm going I'm to take, take Oklahoma State. That's the third in a row. that, Or that's three now that I went different. And I will take Texas. I'll take Oklahoma State in the points. Close game. Texas comes out on top. Yeah. I don't think they have an answer for Xavier Worthy. <laughs> that's the problem and then last this is surprisingly well not surprisingly but this is the biggest game of the day 9 versus 10 UCLA versus Oregon in Eugene it wouldn't matter if it was at UCLA because nobody goes yeah 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 true um, Oregon's kind of got a balanced offensive attack 270 passing 241 rushing a game uh, UCLA 294 passing 211 this is Oregon minus six. I'll take UCLA. I love DTR. I'll take UCLA. As a Georgia fan, I'd love to see Oregon keep winning. It makes us look so much better. Yeah. Um, and Bo Nix has been very, very good since leaving the SEC. Um, Oregon's favored by six. I don't think that UCLA has been to an environment this year like Eugene, Oregon. I think they struggle, and I think Oregon wins and Oregon covers. Mm. It is going to be an environment factor for UCLA, but... Because Oregon has fans. I'm, I'm only picking UCLA because I want to see a Pac-12 team stay undefeated, just for fun. I kind of wanted to pick them too, but I do think Oregon's just a little better... Okay, um, and then that moves us to like the night games. There's two here I want to talk about. First off is the fourth ranked matchup of the day. Sorry, wait. So there's actually Syracuse Clemson. There's five ranked matchups. Five. I, I, I misspoke. Maybe we were sleeping on this week. Um, Mississippi State goes to Bryant Denny Stadium. <laughs> the play uh, coming off of a loss, Alabama. I'm sorry, Mississippi State. It is minus 21. I 100% think Alabama wins this game. 21, though, is a lot. Because I can see it being like 42 to 21. Or 49 to 28. I don't think Bama covers it. I don't think they do either. I think they win by... I think they win by 20. I'll go 20. I think they win by 20. Like, 37, 17. I think Bama's vulnerable right now. And I think Mississippi State coming off a game where their offense sputtered, I don't think they sputter again. I'll take Bama by 10. Okay, Bama by 10. I 
right. Um, I mean, they're gonna have to get. Mizzou State's got to get the passing game going if they want to win the game. Though. They, it's a good team to get the passing game going. Against. I mean, they're only averaging ninety three rushing yards a game right now, and Bama's only allowing ninety eight a game. So they don't run. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. I, I'm, I'm going to take Alabama. You know what? No. I'll take Alabama and they cover. I'll okay. take Alabama and they cover 40. I'm going to switch my score up. 49-21. And Mississippi State scores a late touchdown. And then last but not least, the fifth ranked matchup of the day. And arguably this could be the biggest game of the day if you really want to look at it like that. I'd probably say this is second. Maybe third. I'm going to go third. Um, TCU, Kansas State. It is at... TCU, Fort Worth, Texas, and TCU is minus three and a half. The Kansas, Big 12 is so awesome. Kansas State coming off of a bye week. The last game was a win at Iowa State, 10 to 9. And then obviously TCU coming off of that two overtime win versus Oklahoma State. Who's more vulnerable, do you think? The TCU? I, I think TCU could get caught up in the hype. Um, especially with Kansas State coming off a of bye week, so they've had two weeks to prepare for them instead of one. Um, TCU's undefeated, so they've got a big, t- bigger target on their head, I think. Yeah, top ten. I think TCU wins and covers because it's three and a half. I think they win by three, but they cover because it's three and a half. Okay. Actually, no, I'm going to switch it up. TCU wins, scores a very late touchdown to win the game. It is tied with under two minutes left. TCU scores a touchdown. I'm going to pick TCU to win just because I want to see it. Okay. And cover. Okay. All right. Let me let me go. Let me scroll through here real quick, and let me confirm the biggest spread of the day segment here. It's looking like it's going to be. I mean, there's some high spreads this week. Oregon State minus twenty four, Alabama minus twenty one. San Jose State minus 21 and a half. Good God. That's pretty random. There's some high spreads. Um, but yeah, I think it is Ohio State minus 29. Wake Forest minus 21. Yeah, I mean, every other spread is about five points under Ohio State right now. So yeah. Ohio State's covered by what, 29? 29. Ohio State's going to cover that. I think they would too. I don't know if Iowa State can. I don't know if. I don't know if Ohio State scores 29 points if Iowa State can score that one point to cover. Yeah. Or I said Iowa State. Iowa can cover that I one. mean, Ohio State's going to get to 30. Yeah. So can Iowa get to 7? I like, I like, like, 38 to 3. Would that have cover? Yeah, it's 35. Okay. Yeah. I like 44 to 10. I think they get 10. So we both say they cover. They cover. Okay. And then last but not least, last segment of the podcast is hot takes of the week. Hot, one big hot take of the week. Like we said, biggest spread of the week. We both want to know. We took It was Georgia over Vandy last week. We both took Georgia covering. And hot takes, 0-1, 1-0. You want to do a super dog too? Super dog, what does that mean? It means you take an underdog to cover their spread. Uh, I mean, we can if we really want to. Let's do it. All right. Um, like a big spread or it doesn't like, have to be a big spread. Well, I've already took I already took what's the names covering six and a half or something like that. Oh, I don't know. I'm just gonna take Syracuse and Superdog. That's fine. They're giving me yeah. thirteen points. Um, I want to do something random. <laughs> I want to do something random here. Um. Akron covers my Akron covers eighteen and a half versus Kent State. Don't sleep on Kent State. No. Yeah, they're actually kind of good. <laughs> no, that's fair. No, 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 no. Here we go. This is one I like. This is one I like right here. Duke is plus nine against Miami. Oh yeah, they cover that. They cover that. Uh, they, they might. might win. Yeah, yeah. It's in Miami. Nobody goes to those games. Yeah, Duke covers. That's my super dog. All right, hot take. Oh, this is tough. I gotta think about this. Yeah, this is tough. Um, hot take for this week. I mean, you could always say that Tennessee loses to UT Martin. That's a good one. <laughs> that game will be like 66-3. <laughs> Georgia loses to their bye week. Yeah. Um, 
Here's a hot take. Anthony Richardson has zero turnovers against his bye week. <laughs> oh. Um, um, is that a hot take? Oh, I'm not going to go with that one. This is tough. All right. No, I'm not going to do that again. That was too similar to my one last week. I will say Bo Nix throws... For 300 yards and three touchdowns. <laughs> you love these quarterback hot takes. Quarterback stat line guy over here. Um, Is that a hot take? Is 300 yards and three touchdowns even a hot take? Nah, it could be. Bo it Nicks. is for Bo Nix. I'm switching my super dog now. I've been scrolling through here and looking at this. Vanderbilt is plus 14 against Missouri. I'll take that. I'll take Vanderbilt plus 14 against Missouri. If you um, take the Georgia scores, then Missouri's plus fifty one. Um, hot take of the week: Boston College at two and four beats number thirteen Wake Forest. Wow! At Wake Forest, should I call a game instead of doing a QB stat line? That's more fun. I'll yeah. call a game. Let me look. You want to look at it here? Sure. The whole schedule. Oh, I'm man. sticking with my Bo Nix prediction. Phil Jerkovich, baby. I don't know. How, I don't know how Wake Forest is still thirteenth. To be, I mean, they hung with Clemson. They're only lost in overtime. Yeah. Two overtimes. Okay. Liberty. I was thinking that. I was <laughs> thinking that. Liberty beats BYU. Liberty beats BYU. I was really I was really considering that because when I a couple minutes ago I was like, eh, is that really a hot take to myself? It's gotta be a hot that, take. That that was what I was talking about. Yeah, I don't I, uh, they did struggle with Gardner Webb. But. And Liberty is an underdog at home. I'll, Honest, take, I'll um, take Liberty. And I'll take my Bo Nix quarterback stat line. 76 your Celtics, by the way. That's the other NBA game tonight. Oh. We couldn't figure out earlier. Um, yeah, I guess that's... I guess that's everything. I mean, we covered every game. We really talked about most games last week. We talked about most games this week. So we talked about Heisman. We talked about AP Paul. We did our biggest spread. We did our hot takes. I mean, that's that's how the show is going to go. The podcast is going to go pretty much every week. Um, might try to throw in something new here and there if we can think of something. But I feel like that's a good a good uh, outline. Outline, yeah, or routine. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed. And if y'all want to give us questions or something oh, to yeah. answer, yeah, I mean. Um, we're oh, I didn't even think about this. <laughs> we probably won't get to watch a lot of college football this weekend. I mean, we'll, we'll we'll keep up with we'll it. Get the, we'll get the we'll keep up with it, but we won't get to sit down and watch. We will games. get to watch the second half of all of the twelve o'clock games and all of the three thirty games and probably all the night games. Yeah, we get to watch all the night games. Um, but yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed, and we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Yeah, thanks for watching.